Hey guys, how is everybody doing? And welcome back to another episode of the Automation Campaign. In which the last episode we pretty much worked on all of these vehicles. We brought back the Sposter, we facelifted both the Regale and the Veteretta, and the Raz and the Razo as well. So in today's episode, we are going to be producing, we're going to design and make the replacements to the Regale and the Veteretta because their bodies are now really out of date. I think it re realistically is time to make a new vehicle. So let's have a look. So we would like to do a family. So what I feel like I would like to do is I'd like to split it off into three segments this time. So like we had the first car that did a bit, bit of everything. What I would like to do with these cars is I'd like to have one really premium car, one standard family car, and one really cheap sort of, not really city car, but sort of a ch cheap all-rounder car that can sort of do a bit of everything. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the really expensive car in today's episode. So let's have a look what kind of bodies we have. We have these really nice round bodies, which I do really like. But I would like to keep some continuity in the car in the car design, so we'd have to take bodies that look relatively similar. But what I think what we're going to do is we're going to take these bodies for the cheap car, so the 2.4 meter long body. We're going to take the 2.6 meter long body for the standard for the standard variant of the family car, and we're going to take this long 2.8 meter long body for the for the premium car. So let's let's start with the middle class car. So what we're aiming for this car is we want it to be sold between eight and eleven thousand uh, in game dollars. So what we're going to do is we're going to do steel monocoque steel front transverse for the uh, because cheaper. Uh, McPherson struts and a semi-trailing arm like pretty much all of our other cars have been so far. We're going to do plus one on quality because I feel like that'll help sell that that'll help with the car. And we should now have these engines, all of these engines available to us. Now what I'm going to do for this car is I'm going to use the 15B2, which is the facelifted uh, 1.5 liter variant. And we're going to use the, it's a bit difficult to decide, but I think we're going to use the 1.8 litre as well. So let's use the 1.5 litre for the time being. And I, th I, think that, I think that's the best way to go with this. So, because I feel like we should have like an in, in the middle engine because 300 cc's is quite a lot. And the premium car, I mean, it will have the turbo. I don't know whether this car will have the turbo yet. Because I mean, it is sort of coming to that time where turbo, where turbos would kind of be necessary. But we are this car is going to be a manual only, and we're going to make the one point five, uh, the one point five liter a four gears, uh, four speed. About top speed of what two hundred five? That's fine. We're going to shorten the gear ratios a bit and open diff. So radial tires, obviously, because at this point, what's the point in using a cross ply? 15 inches looks fine to me. We're going to... No, I'll do that later, make the fit in the wheel arches. It depends on how the wheel arches do on this body. So, solid disc, one piston on the front, drums on the back. No under tray. Uh, yeah, standard interior, standard 8... Or we could even go cassette at this point. But do we... Yeah, well, we've got premium cassette here. So we'll do standard cassette. Because now the cassettes are coming into play, so we're going to do a premium cassette for the premium vehicle and premium interior and whatever. And we're going to do plus one on quality for the interior because we do want the um, we do want the car to be ni nice to be in. So hydraulic power steering, no variable. We don't. It's really unnecessary at this point. I don't know whether we want to go with ABS for this car though. We'll have a look how it does in terms of making the car more sellable. We will do plus one on the steering and yeah the steering standard 80 safety progressive uh, and gas monotube suspension and let's see what a standard preset will do so it fits perfectly into the family demograph which is what i'm sort of looking for and yeah brakes can definitely do with a bit more size 
if we do what about 280 and 220 no 230 we can then make the pad type a bit softer which means car will be a bit more comfortable so we'll do 215 on the back and 280 on the front all right I mean it's good start it's a good start and uh, we're not going to do alloy wheels or anything like that we I will let's see if I can we just oh wait no wrong way we want the car to be more understeery so we want positive camber on the front because that tends to induce a lot of understeer perfect and then let's see if we soften the anti-robot no that's the wrong way stiff in the f I don't really want to do that because it all of from test from t from experience the car will be dreadful to drive when you have no rear anti-roll bars so if I can somehow tweak the suspension a little bit to be a bit stiffer first of all so a little bit stiffer we want it to be just underneath the drivable line and you know honestly I'm quite happy with the way this is in terms of drivability Wheels, we can't really do much here. Gear, gear, uh, gearing, we can reduce that by a tiny bit. There you go, no wheel spin, perfect. Yeah, I think we are ready to do the designing of the vehicle. So, I'll get to designing the new face of the vehicle. And I'll see you guys, or of the company really, the new face of the company. Yeah, but no, I'll be with you once I have done that. Okay, so here we are designing our middle class vehicle, so to say. Now, the way that I've planned to do this is I will be making this vehicle, which will be our medium vehicle, our middle class vehicle. And it'll go for, like I, th like I said, between 8 and 11, 11, 12,000 in-game dollars. And then I'll be designing the replacement to the Veteretta, which will be between 6 and 8,000. I'm hoping to try and get it towards the lower end to try and boost some sales. And then I will be designing a replacement for the Regale. Now the Regale is obviously our more premium focused vehicle and to, for it to be sold as a premium focused vehicle it will need to be more expensive because it needs more stuff in it. So it will be around I want to say 15 to 18 thousand in game dollars. So I mean either way I think they will all sell and yeah in terms of design i have tried to keep it in line with what we've had going for the for the last vehicle now only uh, with a more modernized front bumper now in the end i am very happy with the way this turned out it looks very modern for the time and the vehicle itself i feel like it it's i mean it doesn't stand out which i don't want it to but it doesn't look boring so i'm really happy with the way that this thing turned out but yeah i will see you guys on the other on the other end and the time lapse is nearly done i think yeah awesome all right so anyway i'll see you once the time lapse is done Okay, so here we have it, our uh, middle class, well, um, our medium sized family car. Now, honestly, I am quite, I'm very happy with the new look of this company. I tried to keep it as close to the, I tried to keep it sort of in line with how it used to, how the company used to look. I feel like this works really well for what we want the company to be doing. So, the back, I, there's a lot of empty space, I know, but... In the end of the day, this car is just supposed to be a mass market car. We 
are just trying to sell it and I feel like it still looks alright. I'm I'm happy with the way this thing turned out, so in the end managed to get get the competitiveness score just over 150 in the family segment. The passenger fleet segment actually do prefer this vehicle uh, more than the family vehicles. A uh, family demograph. So <clears throat> let's yeah, let's put the car up for sale and see how it does. So we're going to Actually, no, first I've got to put you, uh, quickly put the 1.8 litre engine in this, so, because, I mean, we want variants of the vehicle. Makes makes sense, doesn't it? So, let's put this engine into the vehicle. It'll take a little minute because my computer isn't the speediest of all time. And, yeah, let's hope that this car actually does sell well, because what we're going to, this is going to be like the middle class car. Like, I've said half a million times now. <laughs> um, hold on. This is going to have the 5 gear transmission in it. So, let's quickly do that. So, 5 gears has an estimated top speed of 194. So, we want to do it just above it. We want to try and minimi minimize wheel spin as much as possible. Until they like it to the maximum. I mean, we can get away with 1.3% wheel spin. I mean, when you e when are you ever going to really push this vehicle? It's not really made to be raced. So, brakes will be something that... Uh, let's increase the size of the front brakes a little bit. So, that's all we're going to do for this vehicle. So, let's... Uh, I think we're going to make a new factory for this. We're going to make another large plot factory. Because we want this vehicle to really sell. So, we're going to go back to Fruinia. We're going to take a large plot with a large factory, which, with a large um, one factory. 21,000 cars. A, is that a year or a month? I think that's a month. But take about eight months to build to build this large one factory. So, what could we actually be? What could we actually use here? I mean, leather works. We don't need leather works. Galvanization plant. I feel like we should upgrade all of them to galvanization at least, or treat it steel. Now that'll come later on, so what does this do? This add on is real what is it what's actually an SMG injector? I swear uh, SMC injector, I swear that's got to do with some sort of material. But let's just put galvanization plant on there. And I mean staff facilities, staff starts with six months work experience, uh, which is brilliant. Um what expanded offices will also help maintenance that's also going to help and QA testing also going to help and oh wait I can't put it on there I am full let's take away the maintenance then that's that looks awesome look at this factory that is so cool all right anyway <laughs> we're getting put off a little bit here so we're going to put this car up for sale the factory costs almost 800 million this is going to be a tall order for this vehicle, but look how cheap it is to actually produce this vehicle. <gasps> that's incredible. So that's actually incredible. We're going to be able to sell so many cars at such a profit. It's incre it's going to be crazy because this vehicle, like I said, is going to cost around what eight eight and a half thousand. If we want to go to the cheaper end, I'm probably going to aim for more of a nine to ten thousand. So we're going to do slightly more manual tooling like we've always done. And we're going to try and get this car to be launched fairly quickly, I'd say. So 40 months I'd be happy with. So it's going to cost, I don't know, it doesn't tell me anyway how much it's going to cost. So material costs, labor costs, so about 4,000 it's going to cost to produce this vehicle. So if we go here now, it's already making a profit. So if we just do 8 and 8.2 for the time being, just to see where we sit, is this car going to make us as much money as I hope? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? What about 9 million? What about 9,000? Do they like 9,000? Oh! Right, I've played the campaign a lot in my time. Never have I made a car that is supposed to be as successful as this one. What, what if we do 10.2 and 10,000? I mean, I know that's going to be a bit of a stretch. Oh. My. 
goodness. That's that's nuts. That's actually nuts. Eight million. You know what? Let's let's do it. So we're good. We're not. Do we have to take a loan? I mean, we might as well take out a smallish loan. But I mean, actually, we don't need a loan. We're making enough money on the side to be able to fund this. We're making. Yeah. So here's our Chia. I don't know how to say that. Chia Skundo. Chia Skundo. I'm going to have to learn some Italian to be able to speak some more of this. Anyway. So while that car is now on the side, which one do we want to do first? We might as well do the cheap car next. Because that's going to be probably our best selling car. So, yeah, let's create a new car. We're going to create a family budget. This is going to target the family budget demograph. And... Yeah, so we've got the this body, which I would like to use. I don't know whether there's a... So we've got van, apparently. So we could... I mean, let's have a look at what this body's like. I feel like it would be a bit of a waste of space, to be honest, because you can then do this as a five-door or four-door, and then you'd have everything you'd need. So mono let, let's do this for the time being. If I don't like it... Then so be it. But we're going to do the exact same as we did with the other car. Because essentially it's all going to run on the same platform. I know this game doesn't have platforms in it. So you can't just say, okay, I want to build this car on this chassis. But uh, we're going to pretend like it is. So we're going to do the exact same as we did with the other car. And we're going to use an existing engine. So this is going to make use of our 1.3 litre engine. So our 1.3 and our 1.5 litre, both of them are going to have manual 4-speed transmissions. So, I mean, despite the fact that this is a 1.3 litre, it's actually got a higher top speed than the 1.5 litre in the other car. <laughs> which is quite crazy. So we're going to do about the about 50, about eight, let's do 80 spacing for the time being. So we'll do radial, hard long life, we'll do 165s. Because the other car had 175s. We're going to... Put slightly smaller wheels onto it. Because in the end... What do we want to make... I like the idea of making it all the same. So we're go Because it's the same platform in the end, we might as well... Yes. That means the wheels that are put onto this car can fit onto the other car as well. I like that idea. So. I know it's all... I, I know it doesn't matter, but it just... I like the way it works in my head. <laughs> so we're going to do solid disc on the front, drums on the back. I don't think we'll need that much in terms of braking, so we'll stick with about this for the time being. No under tray, like because we really don't need it. So basic interior, basic eight track. We're still going to we're still going to have to use a basic eight track. So on the facelift, of course, we'll put in the cassette then because we'll have it by then. Hydraulic, no power steer, uh, no uh, ABS. Steering will have plus one quality. I feel like it'll be worth it. And then we are going to do gas monotube. So family budget do really like this car. The only issue is they are not able to afford it as m much as I would like them to. So let's see if I can find a way. First of all, we can work the brakes a little bit. So we can get optimal braking. So and then we can reduce the size of this. There you go. So braking looks fine now. Steering will work on that soon. But I feel like we should probably go with the smaller wheels. I mean, don't really want to. But I mean, they need to be able to afford it. And we need to somehow make things cheaper. So... How are we looking on wheel spin? Wheel spin, we've actually got none. So, I mean, I, did we have... No, it, it doesn't matter right now. So, gearbox, we will do there. So, we have a competitiveness rating of 224 for the time being. I'm not really so sure about that. Why did the brakes on the front suddenly jump that high? Um, because I do want this car to be... What if I put just a... Rear bench into it. It makes it even more affordable. 
So it's got a low comfort penalty, but we can work on that if we tune the suspension a little bit. So we're going to induce understeer because we've still got slight bit of oversteer here. I know it's a front wheel drive vehicle, but it's still a bit oversteery for some reason. And we are going to stiffen up the front anti-roll bars. So we've got that fine now. We're going to make the car a little bit more drivable. So I think about there should be fine. It still has a carrying weight of about 300 kilograms, which I think is a bit low, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit low. So we'll have to increase the stiffness on the rear. Now we're going to sh reduce dampness so that they line up just, just about. So when you go over a bump, the suspension is tuned nicely for a bump. Yeah, I mean, there's not really all that much to to do now. I mean, I do want to make this car a bit cheaper so that cheap so that these demographs buy it. But let's have a look. So family are not even interested in this car. Then it's really uncomfortable for them. Commuters are exactly the same. But city budget and passenger fleet uh, market they do like this vehicle, and pretty much any budget market do like the look of this vehicle. We just need to make sure it's affordable when we put it up for sale. So, I mean, if we reduce quality down here, I know there's no point. We're just going to have to stick with it the way it is right now. So, what we could do is we could just put some more uh, points into our factory, some more stuff into our factory, and then try and sell the car cheaper that way because we'll be producing it for a cheaper price. But, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to design this vehicle as well. And then I'll be back with you once I've done that. Okay, so here we are designing the cheap cheap and cheerful um, Vetoretta. Now, in terms of the actual vehicle, I don't want to make it an absolute scrap heap. So I've tried to keep it looking as similar, quite very similar to the middle class vehicle. And I feel like I did a decent job with this one. The front bumper looks very similar, but the back looks decidedly cheaper than the middle class vehicle now I really I'm really happy with the way that the middle class vehicle is going to sell I want to see if I can try and keep it up with this vehicle and if we can keep it up with this vehicle we should be making a lot of money because I mean all we need to do is make some good cars and they'll sell now this vehicle is not supposed to be cheap so to say it's still supposed to be a quality it's still supposed to be a quality car but it's not meant to be a car that anybody that's looking for a more premium feel will, will be buying it's just meant for those people who just need a car that will work reliably and yeah i feel like i did a good job with this vehicle as well as uh, just like the other the middle class vehicle and yeah so i'm um, the time lapse is nearly done again so i'll be there once i've once I've done the time lapse. Okay, so here we have it. We have our cheaper version of the vet Vetoretta. I believe that's how you spell it, right? Doesn't matter for the time being. Anyway, so car hasn't really improved all that much I feel because it just ended up being pretty good when I when we set off with the initial design so pretty happy with the way this, this turned out sadly I couldn't make the car much more affordable it was very difficult to try and get things to be more affordable because as soon as you take something away even though it'd be actually there you go but I didn't particularly want to take away quality anywhere or just I wanted to make sure that the car still had quality, so ended up with this. Well, I might do actually, just because I've got a rear bench for a seat. Is I am going to get rid of this, and I'm going to move. I'm going to make it a three door, which yeah, that works. That works. That works fine. So, why do they suddenly not like it as much? Is it because there's a door missing, <laughs> or has it got to do with the wheel spin? What what is it? Something doesn't add up. It's probably wheel spin, isn't it? Wheel spin. Well, wheel spin was a factor, but I, don't, I have no idea why they suddenly don't like it as much. I've, does that actually factor in with the doors in this game? That be that's cool. All right. Well, anyway, so because we want this car to be affordable, had to yeah, I had to 
take some things away that I would have otherwise loved to have put on the car, but honestly I'm not m mad about it. In the end of the day, this car is there to give the people something to drive about in, and something worth quality. So the material costs are $2,100 uh, in-game dollars, which is half the amount of, that, uh, of our medium-sized uh, family car. So we should be able to sell this for a couple thousand, maybe even three thousand less, which would be awesome. I'm aiming for about six to eight thousand, uh, well, yeah, six to eight thousand in-game dollars for this car. So this is going to be the Gente 13, because this is all part of the Gente group. And this is going to be the 1.5 litre. I am very tempted, though, to put a turbocharged engine into this vehicle and create a sporty variant of the of the hatchback so i don't know yet leave leave me uh, leave a comment in the leave a comment under the video if you would like to, if you think that would be a good idea to put a turbo into this vehicle and attempt to try and make a sportier vehicle you know something to compete with what the no uh, the Vo uh, volkswagen golf of the time and Vauxhall nova i believe they also had at the time and all those kinds of cars to try and compete with that. I mean, I know they don't really exist in this game, but it would be an idea that I would be very open to. So, no wheel spin here, which is perfectly fine. Brakes are fading, which honestly I'm not too fussed about because this isn't supposed to be a sporty car. I mean, it's 2% fade, so that's, that's really nothing, so let's oh wait what top speed did this car have hold on let's check Let, what the top speed did it have because i feel like because it's a bit of a bigger engine it'll have a high top speed which it does so we can increase the overdrive on the fourth gear a little bit because it increases fuel economy when you when you do that so there you go so let's put this vehicle into production as well so we're going to use the existing veteretta uh, car factory and what we're going to do is we're going to take both and we're going to go back and we're going to make it a large factory too. So that means we're going to be producing more vehicles. So we're going to put a galvanization plant onto it for the future for future cars to for rust proofing. We're going to do QA testing and we're basically just going to do the same thing we did before. So there you go. The factory looks absolutely awesome like it did before. So Let's see how much this factory is. 840 million, which honestly is alright. So, we're going to increase the tooling quality a little bit. And the automation. I mean, automation is fine. And each vehicle costs about $700 to produce. But we're producing 22,000 of them. Or well, 23,000, re really. But that is just a stupendous number. So, we're going to increase reliability. We want this car to release much a uh, bit quicker than the. Actually, we can. We want it to release just after the what you call it the medium family car. I still don't know how to pronounce it, but we want it to release just a little bit after. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this a bit cheap, and we're going to put a bit more learning into it. So f two months afterwards, because I mean the more expensive variant gets sold first, and then the cheaper variant comes two months later, and then hopefully we'll have sold enough of the cheaper variant to. Warrant of uh, well, the medium variant to warrant this car then coming. So we're going to do 6,000 and I think 6.2 thousand just to have a look how it'll do. Which, oh my goodness, five and a half billion! That's a very nice number. So we're going to do just a little bit more, I think. I mean, in the end, this should be fine. I'm happy with the way that this is so yeah this is going I mean it's going to be a very large t uh, act we're gonna have to activate a loan for this so we're going to take an 800 million loan out so we're going to try and pay it back in 10 million per month so that's 96 months we're going to take 75% loan out paid back in 96 months and which is exactly what is it exactly seven years I think is it seven years or eight years? I think no, it's just over seven years. This would be. Oh yeah, this is fine. So let's sign off on this. And yeah, let's do. Do we do we want to do the regalia in this episode? You know what? 
we're going to leave it for the next episode regarding the Regale, the premium variant of this vehicle. So, I'm going to thank you guys for watching because, yeah, I'm really happy with the way these vehicles turned out. And hopefully they also sell as well as they say they do. I mean, we should be making a really nice profit if they do sell the way they're expected to. But yeah, I would like to thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and yeah, goodbye.